Ван фут флипа. Hi, Paige here, the One Foot Flipper. Today we're going to talk about the collectibles market and the difference between selling collectibles and investing in collectibles. When you're selling collectibles, the idea is that you're a dealer, you buy them, you sell them, you don't, you have no want to keep them, hold them, love them forever, or name them George. You want them in and out like any other product. If you're investing in them, that's a different marketplace in which you're specifically trying to identify collectibles that will go up in value and then you may sell them later but you're not trying to flip you're trying to instead find things that will appreciate in value and I don't suggest trying to to mix and match these two strategies too heavily or you can become way underwater or go the go in the wrong route Hey, let's do a few sales here. I sold four different craft gourds. I'm just going to show one because they all pretty much look like this. $55.96 total. Sometimes I make a little bit on the shipping on these because I sometimes I can get them in under a pound. Sometimes they're over a pound. So I've got them in as if they, they were always two pounds. But sometimes it only ends up being one. I sold this play mat for $40 and it sold in less than an hour it's it says pirate lab it's got a white princess knight on there play mats are not normally $40 As a matter of fact I might have underpriced this one it had no comps pirate lab is a company that makes uh car card supplies they make like card boxes and card bags and card backpacks they make some of the highest quality ones but they only made play mats for an extremely brief time or possibly they never made them this might have been a promo that that the store would have gotten from pirate lab for ordering two thousand dollars worth of merchandise or something like that yeah so no comps on this at all and it sold in under an hour see i found yesterday because i'm going through my store both physically and digitally and i found i had about 65 play mats that weren't listed anymore i don't or maybe i never listed them i'm not sure they might have gotten this is stuff that i would have listed in 2020 they might have got you know they might have been ones that never got a sale and ebay delisted them i'm not sure but found, i found all those got those relisted well i don't have all of them relisted i'm being smarter about them trying to make them move faster so all the unique ones i've already listed and i'm lotting and by unique i mean that i don't have multiple play mats for the same game or the same style but otherwise i'm going to start lotting them up by what game they go to to hopefully just move them out quicker i also sold for 27 dollars a miniature this is a Skaven, which is a rat man. It's called a Skaven Rat Ogre. He sold for $27. This is from my friend Ed's estate. He probably painted this when he was a teenager. All right, back to the rest. All right, you might, we're gonna look at some old uh, Home Shopping Network footage of people selling Beanie Babies, probably at the top of the hype market where it, the prices were ridiculous but i'm doing this to show how far all prices can fall in any collectible category anything can be the next beanie baby all right let's take a look at some of this i might pause it for some comments here and there i don't know how to begin on this and i'm, I'm just going to tell you right now i this, think the best beanie adam ever and we go to breakfast. Especially, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna put this up, and once you realize what all's in it, we're putting on music. Robert and I are gone for us. Acting like it can just automatically sell that everybody wants this. <laughs> it doesn't matter. When something's that good and literally sells itself, that's how hot this uh, is. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, it, it's uh, SF8084, SF8084. This deal is so good. That I, I can hardly wait to read the net tomorrow to hear what people have to say about what we did. I wonder what they did say. Folks, we have literally, there are 28 Beanie Babies in here when you consider the retirements that can literally pay for everything right now. Yes, sir. With what the, what's happening with the retired prices. Guarantee you that. 94 different Beanie Babies.
Beanie Babies, and if we could, we'll put with 14 new releases and with 28 retirements. Uh, nowadays, a lot of 94 Beanie Babies will sell for about $94, and it will take a long time to sell. But here, they're at $2,000 for that. So we're talking about a 95% loss on an in investment or collectible category over a period of 23 years. Had this, had anybody invested that same amount of money into anything else, it would be this, I'm going to just say the S&P 500, it would be this large amount of money I'm going to put right up here on the screen. Fire. Or we can just put with 28 retire, since the new releases yeah. are really no longer new releases. Mm -hmm. So we're, that means here's what you've got. And we're going to do something special. Is this it? Right there. We're going to give you the $400 maple bear $2 free cents in now. this package. Look at that. We're going to give you the $2 $4 dollars and 50 maple cents. bear free. So basically, uh, I want you to understand something, folks. And we're going to go through everything you're going to get. You are going to get guaranteed. Do you know now? Because we're going to give you Princess and Aaron. I see Glory. Glory's in here. Wait, wait. Till, and, and again, we haven't even gotten started yet, folks. So you got to understand. Glory what sells for one dollar to today. Already selling. Uh, and here's the problem. Are you ready for this, folks? Now, here's the problem. Number one, we only have a few of these. That I, and I can rest assured. I'm looking at it right here. According to this, am I reading this right? We have 32. That's right. Folks, if we're going to double check on that. We may I only have—I right. believe that we may only have 32 of these. But let me explain something. The retirement is coming up either September 1st or October 1st. We've been hearing rumors of all the way around the board. Guaranteed, every single thing that retires. The only one that Pump wouldn't retire would be uh, the, the, the only. There's only one Beanie Baby that's not in here that's possibly be retired. That's Britannia. And it is not going to be retired. It's a, you know it's a current Beanie Baby from this uh, year, and it's a thousand dollars. Two to five dollars now for Britannia. And Bacania. it's not going to be retired. So, here's the deal. Are you ready? You are going to get every single current American Beanie Baby release. That's you're, you're, up, 65, you're up to speed right there, like that. Sixty-five current Beanie Babies. Actually, that's wrong. We're going to throw in the. Yeah. Maple that was only released in Canada. That's a four hundred dollar Beanie Baby by itself. By itself, we sell them out at three ninety nine ninety five. By itself, right now, we are going to give you this one. Are you ready for this? That's sixty six. Uh, that bear is now more like three dollars and ninety nine cents, including Maple Princess Aaron Peace Glory Glory. Every current my fortune, Rocket the Blue Jay, all the 14 new releases, all the 14 Wise the Owl, which you know is going to be I found retired, several anyway, Wises uh, that have recently Drake sold ducks, for 99 uh, cents the the free scorpion? shipping. Uh, Ants the Anteater, Early the Robin, <laughs> uh, Cuckoo the Cuckatoo, uh, Whisper right. the Deer, the Bastard Hound, the Golden Retriever. <clears throat> what all this is really showing you, though, is that any category of collectibles can experience a bubble. People can lose interest in those categories. Everything can be the next Beanie Baby, even if it seems like it couldn't fail. In the case of Beanie Babies, I don't think there were too many people who were actually truly interested in them past a very basic cute level. Instead, you had people interested in them for financial reasons. And that's the same thing that happened with Funko Pops. And we're seeing the fallout from that right now uh i noticed uh, a lot of my local stores who deal in that kind of stuff have now said they are no longer buying funko pops at all that's spreading all around my area uh, i understand the store that i used to work at is getting out of them now and if the people who are experts in this area are getting out of something that really means something but so got to understand there's a difference between selling collectibles and investing in collectibles when you're selling collectibles the there is no upside if there's any price appreciation on that collectible if you're pricing your item right and it sells then it just immediate and the price the value goes up on the item yours immediately sells you saw none of that upside but if the price goes down you can 
follow that valuable collectible all the way down to zero value like all these beanie babies have done like funko pops are starting to do now i i lost a ton of money several years ago because i wasn't vigilant enough on magic card prices and when that overall market dipped about 50 percent i i took a huge haircut on that because especially those because you're not you're usually not able to 10 extra money on expensive magic cards you've got to pay up for them in the first place you're generally paying at least on anything of value you're paying half minimum to even get somebody to sell it to you in the first place so and after selling fees you know you're only looking at about a 30 percent margin so they don't have a collectible especially like you've got to pay up for you don't it doesn't eh. It doesn't have to lose a lot of value for you to be underwater on it. So that's why you should be very vigilant about your pricing on your collectibles. And you can never... Funkos might go up, back up too. Beanie Babies might go back up. You can never predict it. But if you want to make money in this market selling collectibles, you do not want to try to mix investing and, and selling. Those are two separate categories. And I don't recommend in investing in collectibles at all. I find most collectibles, once they've gained value, tend to start getting reverse traction right, reverse price traction for quite some time, and then they might slowly rise later. But even then, they won't eternally gain value, because when the generations that cared about the stuff start to die off, it's no longer peak prices. Like, even if you look at, you know, collectible cars, antique cars, uh, what's the highest prices are the stuff that was still around that was around while people who were alive today were still alive once you get into your 1930s 20s and 10s cars and even some of your 40s cars those cars are cheaper you know I'm talking about the highest end stuff than the later than 50 than 50s cars and 60s cars are it's because people don't have there's nobody alive anymore who has nostalgia for that era anymore so thus those prices can go down and the same thing will happen with uh you know toys from that a different era clothes books whatever it is it, it, there's definite areas where there can be downward price pressure so that's why it's just important to be extremely up on your pricing on your collectibles you should have a either if it's an expensive item you should be price checking it constantly uh, i was talking to some somebody on a live stream about uh he has a complete earthbound for nintendo and he's had it up for twenty eight hundred dollars for a couple of years and it hasn't sold and he turned down a two thousand dollar offer and i'm thinking i would have taken that offer immediately had had like i said he'd already been trying it for a couple of years because that value it could go up in the future or the same people pumping money into NES cartridges could realize, oh, maybe I don't really need this after all. Maybe I want to pay my mortgage instead, and they could sell them off, and that price could go down. Now, he's not a professional seller. I think he's more of a collector slash investor, so he maybe it's different, different for him, but I know I would have taken that $2,000 offer in a minute. Right now, how do you how do you guys price your collectibles? Why don't you post that down in the comments? All right, let's uh, get out of that and get into a few sales. Uh, sold this pack of cream worms bait to eighteen, and I got these for free or something. So, sold. Speaking of beanie babies, I sold thirty one beanie babies today. How is that possible? Because instead of wasting my time listing them one at a time, I put them all into a lot. I think I stuffed as many as I could into a number seven box. I'll just throw a photo up of the lot because it's already in a box, so there's nothing to look at now. I think I started it at 50, took a 10% off offer, 44.99, and they're out of here. No work, just gone. <coughs> Sold a Q4 Death Pile Monster to Tito. I'll put a link to their store down in the channel. Said, I'm really enjoying your YouTube channel and I'm learning a lot. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you too, Tito. So to get up and bounce, Tigger. 
2002 Mattel Fisher Price. He works just fine. These would be a lot better, I think, if they did not weigh more than a pound. Since they weigh more than a pound, they're kind of expensive to ship. This sold $8.99 plus shipping. Polar Bear Trinket Box, $8.99. My wife looks for trinket boxes when she goes to the thrift store, and she's responsible for 100% of the trinket boxes that I sell because I don't look for them. The Big Chill soundtrack, six twenty nine. I don't know if oh, six twenty nine. I don't know if people buy this to hang this up on the wall or to actually listen to it, but it's old. Jethro Tull bursted out four eighty five. Not a huge sale, but Jethro Tull is usually always pretty easy to sell. Has good sell through rate, even if they aren't always high dollar if so many different albums that the prices are all over the place i'm gonna just keep dropping things from the ground here because that's what i'm good at here all right let's get back to the rest of it okay let's do a few more sales uh large craft court 13.49 plus shipping uh peoria airfare 1951 or 52 official program 8.99 I got this in a lot of like 100 or 200 various old air magazines and such that I paid somewhere between 10 and $20 for. I don't remember the exact details anymore. Some science fiction miniature airplanes for the Aeronautica Imperialis game, $64.79. Those started at 100 bucks because I didn't know how to price them and I slowly dropped them over time. Some Thomas the Tank tracks came from the Goodwill bins. I had good luck with Thomas stuff at first and then it immediately turned bad. I've had these for a couple of years. And there's also a Walt Disney Return to Oz uh, Scholastic 1985 comic. I'll pop that up on the screen because it's somewhere downstairs and I forgot to get it. All right, well, uh, thanks for coming out, everybody. Uh, if you, uh, one thing. Make sure you're still subscribed. Then you go go to that local store that's not buying Funko Pops anymore. Make sure they know about my channel. I know the one guy behind the counter, he knows about the channel. But the boss and the guys in the warehouse, they don't know about the channel. So make sure they know about it. Hope to see you again soon. I'm here. I am the railroad reseller. And I have control of all the fourth quarter monsters. I'm charging 2x, and I'm sponsored by D&O Railroads, the ultimate, ultimate reselling tool you must buy from my sponsor.